Pregnancy is supposed to be a happy occasion for the mother to be, with the knowledge that she has created a new life and is about to experience the joys of motherhood. Unfortunately, it doesn't always end up that way. We are talking about Kelsey Skelling, whose pregnancy turned into a tragedy when she disappeared in the year 2013. Hello, this is Defunct City. Subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell so you don't miss new episodes and stay informed. Kelsey Jean Skelling was born on the 18th of February, 1991, to Mama Laura and Papa Doug. She also had a brother named Colby, but I don't know how old he was. Kelsey grew up in Holyoke, Colorado, a small town about 170 miles west of Denver. Her family spoke of her as active and fun-loving. But when her parents divorced in the year 2002, Kelsey stopped doing what she loved and struggled with depression. After high school, Kelsey went on to study at Northeastern College in Sterling, Colorado. She wanted to eventually get a degree in psychology and do something working with children. Everything seemed to be going for the best in Kelsey's life. In 2010, Kelsey met Donnie Lucas, who played basketball for Northeastern. She fell in love with him from the start, and they began dating. But their relationship changed every now and then, and there was a lot of turmoil. According to Kelsey's roommate at the time, her personality changed when she started dating boyfriend. Their quarrels escalated so much that the roommate moved out. Kelsey's friend would later testify that Kelsey told her that Donnie was physically stronger. This friend also claimed to have seen bruises on Kelsey's body when she and Donnie were dating. From everything I've read, it seems that Kelsey was much more into the relationship than Donnie was, and I've seen many claims that he was just using her for money and was only with her because she was paying for everything. Kelsey moved to California in 2011, and her relationship with Donnie soured. But they got back together in 2012, when she left California and moved to Denver. In December of 2012, Kelsey got a key tattoo with Donnie's initials on it. Around the end of the year 2012, 21-year-old Kelsey began to notice that something had changed. During the vacation season that year, after three pregnancy tests, she told her parents that she was pregnant. They were shocked, of course, but said they would be there for her. She told her friends about her pregnancy in January of 2013. I don't know exactly when she told Donnie about it, but he wasn't too happy about it. According to Kelsey's mother, Laura Saxton, Donnie said he would be there for her baby but his already fragile relationship with Kelsey was on the verge of breaking down. On February 2, 2013, Donnie texted Kelsey asking her to come to Pueblo, Colorado, where he lived. On February 3, Donnie asked Kelsey if she wanted to make the trip, but she said no because she had a doctor's appointment the next day. On February 4, this doctor confirmed that Kelsey was eight weeks pregnant and due to give birth on September 13th. She sent the ultrasound scans to her boyfriend, who once again asked her to come and see him, saying he had a surprise for her. This time she agreed. Kelsey left work around 8.40 p.m. and made the two-hour drive from Denver to Pueblo. While she was on the road, Donnie sent her another message and asked her to meet him at the local Walmart where she arrived just after 11 p.m. After waiting an hour, he sent her another message, this time asking her to meet him at an intersection near his grandmother's house, also in Pueblo. Sometime between 23.15 minutes and half past one in the morning, Kelsey texted Dottie, asking where he was and complaining that she had waited more than an hour for him. This is believed to be the last text message sent from her phone. Several hours later, Dante called her phone, but the location showed that the phones were close together. It is unclear just why he was calling her, but police believe he was trying to locate her phone. Other phone records and calls later showed that their phones were close together in the Pueblo area, including at Doni's mother's house, at his grandmother's house, and at the Walmart where they were to meet. 
In the early morning hours of February 5th, Laura Saxton received several messages from Kelsey's phone, but they were not written the way her daughter usually wrote. Kelsey didn't show up for work that day and didn't call ahead to warn anyone, which was unusual for her. The next day, one of Kelsey's co-workers, Savannah Martin, received a text from her phone saying that she was no longer having the baby because it was growing in the wrong place. She thought this was odd. Kelsey's parents and some of her friends tried to reach her, but never heard back. After several days of no word from Kelsey, her mother, stepfather, and brother went to Pueblo and organized a fundraiser for the search at Donny's house. Don told Kelsey's stepfather that she arrived in Pueblo between 3 and 4 in the morning and they slept at his grandmother's house. The next day, he stated, he took Kelsey to the doctor. According to him, after waiting a while, she told him that she had miscarried. Then she kicked him out of the car and drove away. Dont also told Kelsey's mother that she returned to California to stay with her ex-boyfriend. On the morning of February 5th, Dont was captured on surveillance video as he drove Kelsey's car. He drove to the bank, where he withdrew $400 from her account. Just after noon, he parked her car at Walmart, where they were to meet. The next day, February 6, footage showed another unidentified man driving it away. The car was found on February 7 outside the hospital. Kelsey's parents contacted the police fairly quickly, and they questioned Dante. At first, he denied having anything to do with Kelsey's disappearance or even having any relationship with her. He also told them that Kelsey had been with him at the ADM, and then he had dropped her back off at the store but apparently the security footage proved otherwise. He told police that Kelsey was using drugs and that she might have committed suicide. On February 11th, Donnie's house was searched. On February 15th, he was arrested for identity theft for taking Kelsey's debit card and withdrawing money from her account. When police discovered that Kelsey had occasionally allowed Donnie to use her debit card, the charges were dropped. A few months later, Dondi's mother's landlord found a stain in the house that turned out to be blood. Police dogs also searched Dondi's backyard, but found nothing. Shortly after this search, the house where Dondi was living at the time caught fire. Arson was suspected but never proven. Laura Saxton received a message from an unknown man saying Kelsey was alive. He claimed that Don hired his friend to kill her, but the friend didn't. Don thought she was dead, but his friend had actually sold her into a sex trade. This man said he needed $50,000 to help save Kelsey and told Laura to bring the money to a man named Marcus, who would meet her at a McDonald's in Vancouver. Not surprisingly, Laura was skeptical, but still decided to meet the man. She enlisted the help of the Vancouver Police Department, who agreed to go undercover but they changed their minds at the last minute. ABC News reporters filming for the show 2020 caught up with the man in the parking lot, but he managed to get away after a few minutes. The whole situation is believed to have been a scam. In the year 2015, Kelsey's parents sued Dondi, his mother, his grandmother, another family member, and two members of the Pueblo Police Department. According to the lawsuit, the Pueblo police lied to Kelsey's family about how much evidence they found in Kelsey's car. A private investigator hired by the family later found even more evidence that the police missed. The officers also allegedly did not obtain navigational evidence and did not turn over Walmart surveillance footage to the FBI, which they could have. They never investigated or drained Lake Miniquin Pueblo where a fisherman found a human head and torso in May of 2014. The family sought compensation for funeral expenses, investigation costs, and wrongful death damages. However, the claim was later dismissed. In September of 2016, Laura Saxton went to the Colorado Bureau of Investigation to get them to take another look at the case. It worked. In 2017, the police searched the backyard of the house where Dot was living at the time of Kelsey's disappearance. 
they found new evidence and did not specify what it was, but a spokesman said it was not a body. They also searched the land in Pueblo, but found nothing. In December of 2017, Doni Lucas was already in Pueblo police custody, charged with armed robbery. It was here that he was charged with first-degree murder in connection with Kelsey's disappearance. He pleaded not guilty the following year and later filed a motion in court alleging that Kelsey's father had killed her. After his arrest, Dont also admitted that he was the man on the surveillance tape who drove Kelsey's car from the Walmart store to the hospital. The trial was postponed at least four times for various reasons, but finally began on February 3, 2021. The prosecutors claimed that Dante had lured Kelsey to Pueblo to kill her because he did not want to be a father. They claimed that she was killed sometime between midnight and 3 o'clock in the morning of February 5th. The man in jail with Dante said the man told him Kelsey's body would never be found. On the night of February 25th during the trial, Roxanne Martinez was shot and killed at an intersection in Denver. Rumor had it that Martinez, a longtime friend of Donnie's, was to testify that she overheard Dante confess to Kelsey's murder. One of her family members speculated that her murder might be connected to the trial, but an unidentified man later confessed to the crime and was arrested. The friend's murder is believed to be related to her domestic violence. On March 8, 2021, Don Lucas was found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without parole. At the time of the video's creation, he is in prison. So, after a long eight years, Kelsey's killer is finally behind bars. But the question remains, where is her body? At the press conference immediately after the announcement of the verdict, Laura Saxton said the following, Obviously, I will always say that she was never found. So please, anyone, if you're going on a hike, keep looking. Don't give up on that idea. I know there are a lot of mountains around Denver, and Pueblo is probably no exception. Lots of people have gone missing in mountain areas and never been found. There are lots of cliffs from which a body might fall, or streams where they might have been carried away, and a large number of other possibilities. On the morning of February 6, 2013, there was an attempted break-in at the Pueblo Proving Grounds. Someone had fiddled with the lock there, but the junkyard security camera didn't catch anything but a pair of headlights. Was someone trying to break into the landfill to hide Kelsey's body there? Kelsey Jean Skelling was 21 years old and eight weeks pregnant when she was last seen on February 4, 2013, in Pueblo, Colorado. She was last seen wearing a gray jacket, a black coat with fur on the hood, black sweatpants, and brown Uggs. She was also carrying a pink bag with clothes and personal items inside according to the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. Kelsey was presumed dead, but as of March 2021, a reward of $50,000 was due for information leading to her remains. I had been following her story for some time. But I wanted to wait until the case was solved and the verdict in the Donnie Lucas case was in. Because the video of Kelsey Schelling's disappearance is already out there. I really hope Donnie Lucas is wrong when he says Kelsey's body is somewhere it will never be found. And it's a shame that cases like this are solved eight years later. And many are not solved at all.